So with the rise in popularity of film photography and interest in film photography, just everything film related, I thought it'd be a good time to just make a video on what I would recommend to people who are just getting into film photography, beginner film photographers, and what camera they should be looking into buying. And right here with me, I have three of my own film cameras. They're all 35 millimeter film cameras. They're not medium format. I have one medium format that camera that I barely use, probably should, but the first camera that I have with me is the Canonet. Canonet G3 QL70, QL70 G3, I don't know. I never know how to pronounce this thing's name, but it's a rangefinder style camera. If you remember watching my X100F video, I brought this camera out. And if you are someone that's interested in the X100V or Fujifilm cameras because of their rangefinder aesthetics, this is honestly a great little camera, especially if you're interested in the X100V because it's similar in, it has a fixed lens like the X100V, although this is a 40 millimeter f 1.7. So it's a little bit more zoomed in. It's a little bit more narrow. It's not as wide as the X100V, but it's a little bit faster, which is one of the benefits for this is f 1.7. And it's compact and lightweight like the X100V as well. You can put this in your backpack, you can put it in a sling and you wouldn't feel the weight of it. You, it doesn't take up as much space. Another thing I really like about this camera is the fact that it's fully mechanical. You don't need a battery to operate the shutter speed or film advancement or anything. You, only, you could get a battery for the light meter. It does have a light meter built in here that requires a battery, but you don't have to. You could just take the battery out, use it fully mechanical, use an external light meter like the one I have on here is a Kex EM01 light meter, yep, and just start shooting with it. But if you do want a battery, it uses one of those like coin battery, uh, what is it? 625A coin battery. No idea where you're able to buy one of these, probably online on Amazon or somewhere. But this is a very compact, very durable ca little camera. So a couple of things that I didn't really like about it is one, it doesn't have a way to lock the shutter. So this shutter is as long as you press it, as long as it's ready to go. If you put it in your bag, if it's shuffling around in your bag and it hits a shutter, it will accidentally set off the shutter. So, and there's no multi-exposure mode. So you just basically waste it a shot. It is a rangefinder, so for people who are not as familiar with rangefinders, the way you focus on this is a little bit different. You don't look through the lens, you look through one of like a little thing over here. That's how you uh, see what you're looking at and then you there's a focus on, on the lens. You focus, there's an image inside of the little viewfinder. Once the image is aligned, your shot is in focus a little bit different than SLRs for people who have never used a rangefinder or who don't even know what the rangefinder is. And the shutter speed on this only goes up to one five hundredth of a second. So it's not the fastest shutter speed. All the other film camera, most of the other film cameras, what I would say it goes up to like one one thousandth of a second. So this is a little bit slower. It doesn't might not perform as well in bright conditions if you're shooting portrait 400 or ISO 800 and above films. So something to keep in mind. Now next is a little point and shoot that we have. Oh, sorry, I should mention the price. You can, I bought this for like a hundred something dollars. You can find it on eBay for between a hundred. Maybe you can find some of these for 200. You can also buy the other variants of the Canonet. They're all pretty much the same. They all do a very good job at taking picture, excellent picture qualities. I don't know what the differences are. You can look it up, but yeah, I, you can get these for like a hundred something dollars on eBay. This camera. It's a little point and shoot. I don't have the battery in it, but if you are someone who's been using disposable cameras before, this is a great little upgrade because you can change the film. You don't have to be stuck with the Fujifilm one or the Kodak one. You can shoot Fuji, you can shoot Kodak, you can shoot all different kinds of film stock. You don't need to be restricted to one specific type of film stock or brand. You can choose whatever you want. It's a little bit cheaper in the long run as well since this is reusable. It's got a 35 millimeter f3.5 lens on it. Not the fastest lens, not the best quality lens, but for someone who's coming from a disposable camera, this is a great little upgrade. It's very compact. You can put it in your pocket and just take it with you. It has autofocus, so you don't have to worry about your shots being misfocused. Obviously, it's not the best 
autofocus in the world. We can't compare it to Canon and Sony's autofocus in 2021 when this camera was came out in 1991. It's actually my parents, my, they bought it in 93. The only downside I'll say about this camera is just keep in mind this is one of those point of shoot cameras. You're not gonna get as much manual control over your aperture settings and everything. So if you want something a little bit more serious, that's where our next suggestion is going to be. But this is just a very, very compact and lightweight and good upgrade from a disposable camera. You can find these on eBay for about a hundred something dollars. Uh, it's called the Olympus Mu 1. I don't think I actually mentioned the name this whole time, but it's the Olympus Mu 1 or the Olympus Infinity Stylus, depending on which market you're buying this in. They're both the same thing. They have a second version of it. Again, not sure what the difference is but this is the one that I have. Again, this is my parents. I just got it. This is the camera I started film photography with and it worked really well. It takes a CR123A battery. You can buy them on Amazon. I found mine in Target. Not entirely sure if they still have it, but great little camera. Now the next camera, this is a beast. All right, this little camera, doesn't matter how many film cameras I buy, I recently bought the Canon P, which is sitting right here. It's another rangefinder style camera. But it just doesn't matter how many cameras, how, what types of film cameras I bought. I always come back to this camera. Like I always end up just picking up this camera. This is the Canon A1. And it's gotta be one of my favorite film cameras that I've used so far. It's rugged, it's durable, it's made out of metal, it's hefty. Like the weight of it is great. It's got a little grip. You do have to buy this grip, I believe. It doesn't come with all cameras, not all of them have it, but the little grip gives it a little bit better ergonomics. All the dials, all the buttons and everything, they're made out of metal. So it's a very sturdy and durable camera. You can change the lens on this camera, so it's interchangeable. This is a 50 millimeter 1.8. I have a 28 millimeter f 2.8, so I can switch it out between shooting portraits and landscape. It gives me more options. Canon's FD lenses are great. You can find these two type of lenses relatively cheap as well, under $100 should be. There are some expensive ones, but again, I'm not buying it because it's too expensive, but these two are great for a good variety of use cases. And one benefit this has over the rangefinder and the Canonet uh, talked about earlier is since this is an SLR, you look through everything through the lens. The image that you're seeing through the lens is actually going to be what the lens is going to project onto your film. So if it's 50 millimeter, you're looking at a 50 millimeter field of view in the viewfinder. If it's 28, it's gonna be a 28 millimeter. It's not gonna be different on like on a rangefinder. Rangefinder is not through the lens, but this is. So it's gonna be a little bit better. It's not gonna be as confusing for those who are starting out with film photography that you realize, oh, my composition's wrong because you're not actually seeing what your lens is seeing. So you can find this camera on eBay for about a hundred dollars to two hundred dollars as well similar to the Canonet, i bought mine for about a hundred bucks it came with the 50 millimeter 1.8 lens um i do see the prices on this camera going up quite a lot recently some i think i did a recent search on it and the body alone could go up to 200 bucks sometimes which is getting kind of crazy to me but if you're able to find a good deal on it, you can, this is a really good camera to start out with. It's four different modes, program, which is automatic, aperture priority, shutter speed priority, and manual. If you don't know what they mean, I just made a video about it, explaining the four different modes. They're gonna be down in the description. Feel free to go check that out. Now this camera is fully electronic. So without a battery, you're not gonna be able to use it. It takes a 4LR446 volt battery. I don't know who the heck is coming up with the names for these things, but you can find these again on Amazon. And the battery life on this is really great. I've had this camera for like two years now, I bought it in 2021, and I think I'm still on the same battery. I don't remember changing battery on this thing at all. So I use this quite often. So yeah, no, the battery on this, it really does last a long time. And the battery is gonna power the light meter in this as well. It has a built-in light meter, so you don't have to worry about getting an external light meter. Although my light meter is a little bit faulty, so just be sure to double check before you buy it to make sure that most of everything is still right and is still working properly. But yeah, this is honestly one of my favorite film cameras I've used so far. It's not the most compact camera uh, compared to the other options out there but this is still a tiny little beast it does pretty much all the things i need but if you 
can find this. The its brothers uh, works as well. The Canon AE1 and the Canon AE1 program. They're all very good cameras as well. They're built very similarly to this. Those are also equally good options on top of the ones I've just mentioned here. But yeah, that's about it. Let me know if you are getting into film photography as well. Start a conversation down in the comment sections. What kind of camera you're using, what film, film format you're shooting. Are you shooting 35mm or are you shooting medium format? I look into medium format. Might get in medium format or I just might use a one that's on my shelf. It's a very old TLR. Um, I do want a 645 medium format camera. But yeah, let me know. If you have one of these cameras, let me know your thoughts on one of these cameras or which camera you would rather get instead. And uh, I'll see you next time. Peace out.